In this video, we are going to have a look at the TechArt TZE01 Autofocus Adapter which allow you to adapt the Sony Eman lenses onto Nikon Z body with autofocus support. Good morning everyone, Rich Vaughn here. So last week I published a video that um, was the first impression review of the Tech Art TZE01 adapter. That's the first ever uh, adapter that allow you to adapt the Sony Eman lens onto the Nikon Z body with autofocus support. When I did that video, I was using a pre-production adapter with uh, non-final firmware. Um, I had just received the USB dock from TechArt a couple of days ago and that allowed me to update the firmware to the 1.0 firmware and that's why I'm coming back today and um, do another round of video um, to test out the performance of the TechArt adapter with the 1.0 firmware. If you haven't checked out my first impression video of the TechArt adapter, I would highly recommend you check it out because I'm going to skip over some of the things that I already discussed in that video. And um, I think a lot of the, the good thing about the adapter in that video should still apply to here because I'm only expecting the firmware will only get better uh, compared to the pre-production one that I was using before. So yeah, go watch that video first and then come back to this one if you haven't watched that one first. Otherwise, if you want, you can still continue watch this one and I will just try to uh, quickly cover what I've talked about last one. Now first, let me quickly go through um, the design and the build quality of the adapter first. Um, keep in mind, I'm still using a pre-production sample so um, the build quality is not really exact final quality but it should be very similar. Now the first thing you'll notice is that the adapter is actually a very very thin adapter. Look at it, it's mounted onto the body and how thin it is. If I don't tell you that there's adapter here, you may not even notice it because it's just so thin because of the French um, distance between the uh, Sony E-mount and the Nikon. Z man, there's only 2 mm difference, so that means the adapter itself is only 2 mm uh, deep. Let me take it off and show it quickly to you. Yep, so this is the adapter, very, very thin. Somehow they managed to put all the um, electronic contacts, CPU, everything inside it. That is a bit like a magic. And um, okay, put it on. Oh, an another thing um, I mentioned in my first impression video that when I try to remove the adapter, I feel like I'm going to break the tap because the adapter is so thin. So there's no place for me to really hold on to the adapter when I try to take it off the body. But I noticed there's actually another easier way to uh, remove the adapter from the body. And that seems to be much easier and faster. And the way to do that is that um, once you have everything on here, you remove the adapter with the lens uh, first. So you don't just remove the lens from the adapter, you move, remove both of them together. So to do that, you click the uh, button on the body and then you twist it. So now you have both the adapter and the lens removed. And now you just press this little tab here and that will allow you to easily remove the adapter from the lens as well. With the adapter and the lens all mounted together, it actually feels very solid. The amount of prey um, when you really try to twist it or um, hold it by just the lens, it doesn't feel much difference compared to you just mount a native lens onto the body directly. Tech art they say that if you want to mount a very heavy lens onto the adapter and onto the body, it's best you hold uh, both the lens and the body as well. Don't just hold the body by itself. But that's pretty much the same case if you just mount a very heavy native lens onto the body. You really should be holding both the lens and the body using your two hands as well. In my first impression video, I have tested the single autofocus performance um, of the adapter with a few different Sony FE mount lenses. And overall, the performance was very good. Uh, autofocus speed is fast and the accuracy is good. Reliability seems to be pretty good as well. With the Sony 2470 f2.8G master lens, the autofocus does seems to um, hesitate a little bit 
there is some housing or wobbling before um, it managed to lock onto the target. So I tested with the 1.0 firmware again. Um, unfortunately, that doesn't seem to change much. There is still some wobbling before it managed to lock onto the target. But even with that, I think the performance is still good enough for most people. Oh, before I forgot, I have actually also tested with the Sony um, 100 to 400 f4.5 to f5.6 G master lens as well, just to see if um, it works with the super telephoto lenses. And it also works reasonably well as well, even though um, I was testing it indoor with this lens, which is a much slower lens. And with the previous firmware that I got, it wasn't really compatible with a lot of third party FE mount lenses. So even though it does work with the size Betty's 25 F2 lens, uh, with the old firmware, it didn't work with the Tamron lenses or Sigma or the uh, Samuel lenses. So this time I give it a test with a lot of different third party FE mount lenses. So the first one I test is the Tamron 2875 2.8 because this is the super popular lens. Um, and it works, and it works very well as well. Uh, autofocus speed is very fast, and the accuracy and the reliability are both very good as well. Then I test it with the Sigma 70mm f2.8 macro lens, and again, the autofocus works very well, just pretty much exactly the same as the Tamron. Fast, accurate, reliable, there is some very occasional, very minor wobbling sometimes before I lock onto the target. But I think for most users, it's actually not a problem at all. After that, I tried the Samyang uh, 35F2.8 lens. So um, I think that was the first Samyang autofocus lens for the Sony FE mount. Correct me if I'm wrong. And um, so I mount that lens onto the body with the adapter. And I immediately noticed something's not quite right because the maximum aperture um, is not 2.8. No matter what I do, um, it doesn't go down to f2.8. And then I noticed that the um, either the EVF or the LCD screen on the Z6, the refresh rate seems to be a lot slower than usual. Um, so it looks like the camera is struggling um, to communicate with the lens or something like that. But somehow, um, autofocus actually still works. Um, it's quite a bit slower compared to the previous uh, Tamron or the Sigma or the Sony native lenses, but it still works. So because of that, I then switched to uh, a much newer Samuel lens, the 35 f1.4, which is one of the latest lens. And with that one, it works perfectly. The maximum aperture is displaying um, correctly f1.4 autofocus speed is very fast, very accurate. So um, I'm guessing because that 35 2.8 was the first Samuel lens, maybe they didn't do something um, quite as well as the latest 35 1.4. And so maybe that's why that the 35 1.4 works pretty much perfectly while the 35 2.8 works, but not really perfectly. Now I mentioned the size Betty's 25 f2 lens before because I did test it in my first impression review. The autofocus works very well with it with the earlier firmware and of course it still works very well with the latest firmware. But one thing that I'm most interested in is that because with the, um, the older firmware, the menu focus doesn't work at all. When I switch to menu focus mode, the first thing is that the menu focus just didn't work at all. And also another thing is the OLED display on the lens. Um, it's just off all the time when I was trying to menu focus. But now with the latest 1.0 firmware, the menu focus works and works perfectly. I can menu focus with no problem at all. And also the OLED display also display the information correctly, just as if you mount it directly onto a Sony body. So that is excellent because I know that a lot of people are very interested in this Sony side Betis lens. So it looks like the compatibility with those lenses are now a lot better with the 1.0 firmware. And I also did a bit of testing just to see when I'm shooting in single autofocus mode. Um, when I move the autofocus point from center all the way to the edges, and how does it affect the autofocus performance? Because even tech art say that the autofocus performance is the best uh, when you're using the center autofocus point. So I start to test by using the center autofocus point. Uh, the performance is pretty good. Then I start moving slightly to the edge. The autofocus performance is still pretty good when I'm starting to move closer and closer to the edges. 
when I move the autofocus point further out, uh, when it's getting closer and closer to the edge of the sensor, then I do notice the overall um, autofocus performance starting to drop a little bit. Um, sometimes it's failed to lock on to the target. When I finally move the autofocus point to the edge of the sensor, then um, the autofocus performance now drops significantly. Most of the time, the camera couldn't even lock onto the target. It seems like the closer the um, the target is, the harder for the camera to lock onto the target because the closer distance target, it seems like it's almost 100% fail. While when I focus on some of the, the further away objects, then the camera does sometimes manage to lock onto the target. So overall, I think if you want to maintain good autofocus performance, try to maintain um, and use just the center, maybe 60 or to 70% of the autofocus area. I have then mounted the Sigma MC11 adapter on top of the uh, TechCard adapter that allow me to mount the Canon EF mount lenses onto the Nikon Z6 through the use of the two adapters and the autofocus performance. Um, it really depends on which EF mount lens um, I mount onto the body but it, overall it works and with a particular lens it works really really well so um, I was a little bit surprised but anyway I have created a separate video that uh, talk about it and show you some of the, the result I got so um, go check out that video after this if you are interested as well the next thing I want to test is the continuous autofocus performance. So I start testing with the 2470 f2.8G master lens and um, I think the performance is pretty good. Um, definitely there's some noticeable improvement when I compare with the previous firmware. Um, I switch to the 35 1.4 Sony lens and definitely I can notice there is a big difference, big improvement compared to the previous firmware. Because with the previous firmware when it's trying to do autofocus at maximum aperture, when the distance between the camera and the target is changing, sometimes there will be some pretty heavy pulsing or wobbling. And with the latest firmware, there is still a little bit of wobbling um, that happen that could happen when the, the distance is changing, but it is much, much better. The amount of rubbering is much smaller and also the frequency of it happening is also a lot less than the previous firmware. So overall, while the continuous autofocus performance is still not perfect, but it is much better compared to the previous firmware already. Face detection and eye detection still work with the tech card adapter, but um, as my earlier test uh, suggests, try to keep your subject um, near the center of the frame because once your subject go near the edges of the frame, then the autofocus performance will drop quite a lot. Oh, in case if you're wondering, um, this is what the adapter looks like. So it's pretty much looks like a landscape Pretty simple. I actually don't know whether this is a pre-production one or the actual retail one, um, but I guess uh, it should be very similar. So it's very simple, very small. There are a couple of connectors here, so um, connect to the adapter, and then there's a USB, um, there's a micro USB connector at the outside. Let's go get the software from the website, and the um, the update process is very quick. But I do remember some of the status message or warning message are in Chinese. So um, if something goes wrong, then it may be a bit hard for non-Chinese speaker to understand what may have gone wrong. Oh, and the USB dock is actually um, included free when you buy the adapter. So here you go. This is my review of the TechArt TZE01 adapter running firmware 1.0. While the adapter is not perfect, there's still a little bit of uh, pretty minor wobbling when it's trying to lock onto the target sometimes. And I think there were one or tries, then the autofocus will suddenly stop working. I have to reset the camera. But this is an adapter. It's um, done by reverse engineer the protocol, um, the Nikon protocol. So really, no one really should expect it to work 100% um, just as well as if this is a native lens. And to be fair, even the Nikon FTZ adapter is done by Nikon themselves, and it's still not 100% perfect adapter. So to be honest, I'm definitely very impressed by the performance of the adapter. It 
definitely far exceed my expectation when TechArt first told me that they have this adapter I wasn't expected to be anywhere as good as this because with some of the lenses the performance is almost as good as if um, I was just using a native set mount lens and I would say the performance is better than when I using um, the FTZ adapter with a um, the Nikon F mount lens because with that adapter and the Nikon mount lens um, you do notice the autofocus operation is not actually that smooth sometimes while with the Tekka adapter the autofocus performance most of the time is actually very nice and very smooth as well and another thing that got me excited is that now TechArt managed to crack the Nikon Z communication protocol. Does it mean other third party lens manufacturer can also do the same thing? So are we going to see some autofocus Z mount lens from other manufacturer with very good autofocus performance as well? I guess we have to wait and see but right now I am definitely very impressed by this TechArt adapter. So what do you think about this tech art adapter? Are you just as excited as me as well? Are you going to buy one? Do you think it's changed the world completely? Or you think it's just another adapter? Um, feel free to leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. And uh, thank you very much for watching this video. And I will see you in my next video.